It's just over 30 years since I was driving around in my first Mini as a teenager who just passed his driving test. And it's 5 years since I bought my current Mini and started on all of the restoration work. So you can imagine how keen I was to get behind the wheel once the car was drivable. But unfortunately that excitement didn't last very long because I've now had to take the car off the road to sort out a number of annoying little issues that have really taken the fun out of driving it. The channel is all about documenting the restoration, the life and the ongoing maintenance of Smugwood Mini. And I know that there'll be both good days and bad days with the car. But at the minute, things seem to be unbalanced in the wrong direction. And driving around in the car with several little issues isn't really helping to swing things around for the better. So I've decided to take the car off the road for a little while in the hope that I can sort out a few of those concerns. Some of the issues I can easily sort out myself, some I may need a little help with and some I'm not quite sure even where to begin. I've listed most of the issues here to keep up to date with the video diary series and hopefully in the next few weeks I'll have another video with everything getting sorted. My first concern is the paintwork. The car was painted very recently so it looks pretty new but up close there's a couple of things to sort out. The roof was sprayed a few months ago but there was a couple of little problem areas to sort. I needed the car for Bingley Hall Mini Fair so the painters did a quick fix but said it would need to come back in to be sorted properly. I'm not a painter so I'm not sure what work will be required but I'm guessing that the roof will need flattening back and a full roof respray. There's also a few areas on the body which need attention. Some of this was just a little defects in the original work and some of this was caused when I was fitting the parts back to the car. But hopefully when it goes back for the roof repairs, the little chips on the bodywork can be sorted as well and then the car should look spot on. I was never aiming for a concourse look but it would be great to have it as a show and shine car and for that the paintwork needs to be at a reasonable standard. Inside the boot I've left things as basic as possible just in case there's ever a fuel leak. But I need to sort out the grommet for the battery cable where it passes through to the boot floor. And the battery needs securing down so as not to rattle around when I'm driving. I need to look at why this window is so stiff to wind down as well. I'm guessing it's because the rubbers are so tight on the glass with it being new, but it doesn't seem to be getting any easier to wind even after lots of use. This light switch seems to have jammed as well for some bizarre reason. The light fitting is brand new so I'm not sure why it doesn't work but hopefully that's an easy fix. The dashboard looks great. The original plan was to have a dash with no glove boxes so that I could add lots of dash instruments. But that never materialised and I've had to make do with what I was sent, but it looks nice. I just need to wire the clocks up properly and decide whether or not to add some extra wires for a radio or a sat nav system. Then the whole thing just needs tightening up properly so as not to rattle when I'm driving. Newton Commercials are sending me one of their own gear stick gaiters to try, as this rubber one that I bought from a shop isn't the best fit, so that should help finish off the interior quite nicely. The roof lining fits well but this corner was always a little creased. I left it at the time for fear of making it worse but I may have a little play around and just see if I can maybe straighten it out a bit. But that's not high on the priority list and to be honest there's very little to do inside the car because the interior looks pretty good and something that I'm really happy with. This is where things get a little bit more stressful. I'm having major issues with the bonnet. It fitted absolutely perfect when shut but when opened it wouldn't clear the wiper arms. We've tried all sorts of things to try and improve the clearance but nothing seems to work. Lots of people have come round to have a look at it and see if they can see where the problem is but everyone's puzzled. The only way for me to open up the bonnet at the minute is by removing the driver's side windscreen wiper. I recently bought some new hinges from Minisport in the hope that this would help but that seemed to make things a lot worse when it should have actually made things better. So I gave them a call and sent them a picture of my old setup and they spotted that it looked like the original hinges were Clubman hinges. Now I don't have my original bonnet because it was rusted beyond repair but it may be that the combo of the original hinges and the new heritage bonnet is the problem. Most of the stress for me seems to come from the front end of this car. The car has never been running right since I got it working. This is simply down to the fact that it needs setting up properly but there's currently nobody local who can do that. I've tried to sort it myself but it doesn't run great. Minisport would be my go to option but their rolling road isn't currently in operation. There are a couple close to home but again they either have a rolling road that's not working or they just simply don't have the experience to tune SU carburetors. 
There may be one rolling road option which is about an hour's drive away, so that could be the option. But that leads me on to my next series of problems which may actually prevent me from leaving the garage full stop. The clutch. The biting point is really low, and maybe it's all in the setup, but I've tried quite a few things as per the manual and it doesn't seem to improve. There's also a fluid that sometimes settles on the top of the can, but no signs of obvious leaks. It stripped the paint off where it's dripped down onto the bulkhead and made a right mess. This is something I'm keeping a close eye on. The accelerator is crunchy when I'm pressing it, and I'm not sure if it's because of an incorrect cable or the route that the cable's taking. I've currently tie wrapped the cable to the breather and fitted a different connection to the carb, which has helped improve things quite a bit. It's not quite there yet, but the stiff crunchy pedal and dodgy clutch really takes the fun out of driving, so this is something that I need to look into. There seems to be fuel leaking in this area and staining the paintwork, but this pipe was always a temporary setup, so I'm hoping that a new pipe and rubber will fix all of this. The induction noise when driving was a bit too loud, so I've swapped the corner filter for the standard airbox and a K9 element. It is a lot quieter, but it feels a lot slower. Fingers crossed though, a good tune-up will fix this problem. Then there's a wiring to finish, mainly for the clocks to function properly, but I've spoken with Auto Sparks and we've worked out which colours of wire to order so that I can have it matching the colours in the Haynes manual and add everything to the existing loom. Engine-wise, it does seem to run smoothly and the gearbox is great, although I do regret now not fitting a different diff. I use the original 3.4, but should have gone to 3.1. It'd just be nice to have a little bit more out of each gear. But there are a few oil leaks. The fan's covered in oil mist, which may just be from the breather, but the main oil leak seems to be coming from somewhere near the timing chain cover. I'm concerned that it may have to be an engine out job, but that's currently under investigation. The reason for the leak could be for a number of reasons, and I'll leave this until I've sorted out all the other issues, as this could be the most problematic. But last week I had a more serious problem when I took it out for a drive and I heard a huge knocking noise. Maybe it was related to the knocking noise that I heard in the previous video when I was running in the engine. But after inspection, I found that the corn washer holding the hub assembly on had broken into several pieces and the hub nut had come loose. It was at that point that I decided enough's enough and I need to take the car off the road and try and fix all of the issues that were of concern. So there is a lot to sort out, and available funds is really what's holding up the job. It's not the start that I'd really hoped for, but if I'm honest, it's the start that I expected. After all, it's a mini. But I'll crack on, I'll do my best to get everything sorted, and hopefully in the next few weeks I'll be back driving the car.